Hey, uh, I want to talk about OSC tonight. This is Eric from Eraser Mice, and uh, I have a cool free, little free Max for Live device at uh, the website, uh, erasermice.com. Uh, come and get it, or feel free to pick up uh, any of the other devices I have there. But anyway, okay, so uh, what this device is, is going to be a simple way of controlling, um, uh, basically using OSC to control any uh, Ableton Live uh, device parameters or API parameters. So uh, it's a audio device. I can drag it on any track uh, as long as it's somewhere in the audio chain. I'm just going to throw it up on uh, the seven track here, and you'll see um, it looks a lot like if you looked at the Max building blocks, um, the API building blocks. The the bottom part is basically all building block, and the top part is what I've added here. This OSC name that shows me the name or the address that I'm listening to on this particular device, and also the port number. Uh, so the most important thing to get uh, OSC, uh, like a you know touch OSC or lemur or one of these things talking to your computer, is you need to make sure that this knows about the IP address uh, of the computer and also that it's sending to the right port. So by default, they typically use port 8000. And uh, the address is going to be, that's going to depend on, on how your network is set up. Uh, my computer happens to be 192.168.1.130, so I need to tell the iPad to send to that. But then other than that, it's all good. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, I have just sort of a random bunch of controls set up here inside Touch OSC, and I don't know their names offhand. Um, you may or may not know the names. So I've added this map capability here. You click on map, and then you touch a control. And you'll see, oh, that's control the first page, and it's named as Fred. And he's gotten mapped, and now he can control things up and down. And I can map him to, say, the volume of track one. So now Fred is controlling the volume of track one. Now, say you want to control the volume of track two. What do you do? You grab another one right over here. And that comes up, and you say map. And we'll grab this rotary, and we'll say map. Uh, oh, we'll map it to that. So now that maps that. Whoops. All right. And this maps that. And on and on. Real simple, real easy way. Uh, this is a free device. Come to my website. Uh, you can grab it or, like I said, any other cool stuff on there. You can type in uh, things in here. So let's say uh, Bob, for instance. And I just happen to know that there is a control on here named Bob. So now Bob, since the, so let's see, I don't know, here's the X, Y, I'm not sure what that is, let's see, map. Now when you have multi-dimensional controllers like this X, Y pad, it's just going to grab the first value. So it's X, Y, it's only going to grab the, the X value. So you see as I move left and right, sort of as far as the control goes, things change. If I move up and down, it doesn't change left and right. Okay, so let's say instead of that, I'm going to pull up lemur. Now lemur is already set up. It knows about the address here, 192.168.1.130 in port 8000. I'm going to say done. And I happen to have some, uh, you know, again, a random kind of thing on here. I'm say map. Okay, there's fader 1. So, well, maybe we'll grab fader 1 over there. Map fader 2 there. And I'll say map that one. Map that one. Okay. Uh, so now I've got... What, what did I do? I got backwards. Oops, I did backwards. How'd that happen? Map one. Yeah, map that one. There we go. I don't know what I did there, but anyway. So it's a real easy way to you know grab the non-standard controls and anything you're going to put on there. Let's see. I grab a Redux. Put a Redux on there. And it's kind of a cool thing to do if you have, if you do have, uh, uh, well, I assume you probably have Live Suite if you're doing all this stuff anyway, but you can do things like say, I want to have an OSC controlled Redux. I'll move this around, and grab the two together, group them, and map that control. And of course, that's going to map that. There we go. There we go. All right, so that becomes a little control. You can save that. Um, and it's awesome. Okay. So like I said, you can come 
to EraseYourMice.com. Grab that for free uh, if you want to look inside there. Let's take a quick peek in there, what's going on. And you'll notice, uh, just like with all the other Macs for Live devices, you can open them up and check out what's inside. So I'm going to unlock or unfreeze this one. Then it gets unlocked and open up in patching mode. And you'll see it does look, you know, basically it's using all the original Ableton stuff for the, uh, the parameter control over here. But over here is the part that I've added that uh, basically lets you, here's a, a text box that lets you set the name. Uh, here's a numerical that lets you set the port number. Uh, and then UDP receive, port 8000 by default. That's the uh, receiving network command. Um, or network object, and that, the things that come back, it looks for whichever uh, address has been assigned to it, unpacks the, the first value. Originally, I lifted this from some code that actually had an X and a Y value, so I decided to leave it around for no good reason. Um, a little magic up here, which lets me map parameters. Basically, I have a gate that opens. If I click on map, it opens the gate and lets that value come through and set this text box. And then the moment it does, it also sends a zero through and closes the gate and disables the map again. So that's what's going on up here, that little bit of magic. And that's about all there is to it. So enjoy, come to Eraser Mice, check out some of the conducting tools, the floating window tools, all that kind of great stuff. Until next time, this is Eric for Eraser Mice and Learn Max. Remember, subscribe and learn Max. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.